the name or formula of the catalyst used. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what is happening. In an experiment, a test tube containing methanol, propanoic acid, and a catalyst is heated in a warm bath. Well, we have the setup in front of us, the warm bath. Under the warm bath, we have some heat, methanol, propanoic acid, and a catalyst. Already, you should be able to tell that we have a starification taking place. Okay, so which catalyst is required when we are trying to have a starification? Uh, the catalyst is H2SO4. That is the catalyst. The question says name or formula. So if you say sulfuric acid, that would also be fine. But in some instances, the question would say the name. And then if you write H2SO4, it would be wrong. Or it says uh, the formula. Of which if you write the name, it would be wrong. Right. So there we go. That is 4.1.1. What about 4.1.2? The type of reaction taking place. Um, even in say, after doing all the equations, uh, what does this comment say? Do you mind doing multiple choice for paper two? Um, we'll see about that, but I doubt I will. Multiple choice takes too much time and it, it doesn't get as much views. So it doesn't make sense for me to do it. Um, the type of reaction taking place is esterification. So, esterification there we go that is 4.1.2 then 4.1.3 two reasons why the use of a water bath is preferred in this experiment over direct heat one of the reason is because alcohol is extremely flammable right so there we go uh, that is one reason alcohol is flammable so if you put it on heat if you put it directly on heat, then it's gonna burn, and that's not what we want. So that is one reason why we use a water bath over putting the uh, reactions on heat themselves. Um, so what is the other reason? I would like you guys to tell me. So please leave a comment and tell me which other reason you can think of. Um, well, in class, during the course of the year at the beginning of the year we actually performed this experiment and we lost patience at some point of time because it was taking so too long and we put the test tube directly on heat on the fire that was burning yeah because we're using a sort of a benson burner i forgot the technical name of the uh, apparatus we're using and then we experienced some issues well almost all the contents evaporated from the test tube so we were not actually able to smell uh, the contents or because after an extermination you take a smell and then there's some things that you write so on and so on so we're not able to do that because we lost patience and put the test tube over uh, the file but let me know which other reason can you think of that is 4.1.3 let's do 4.1.4 the balance equation for this reaction uses structural formula. So we have methanol plus propanoic acid. So let's go ahead and take a look. Methanol. So alcohol with one carbon. Okay, that is methanol. Plus propanoic acid. Acid with three carbons. So we're going to have, let's take a look. Carbon. Well, we're supposed to have OH here. And let's see. Oh, we need more space. Let me start with the H instead. Uh, H, O, carbon, double bond, oxygen. Right. And then let's three carbons and not two because it's prop. So hydrogen, hydrogen, and we need another hydrogen here. One, two, three, four. Okay. So this hydrogen, that carbon is fine. And then uh, this will give us... Uh, an ester. So what's gonna happen? The alcohol loses the hydrogen and the acid loses the OH. As a result, you're gonna have carbon, oxygen, and then now carbon. Okay, and then one, two, three. Okay, there we go. And then now we just need to fill out the hydrogens. Right, so let's do that. So there we go. We're supposed to have something 
like this. And then obviously here we can write H2SO4 as our catalyst. But what happened to the H2O that we removed? Is that it doesn't disappear. So we're gonna have plus oxygen H H, not plus H2O because H2O is not a structural formula, right? You're supposed to write it in this manner. If you write it as H2O, that is technically wrong because H2O is not a structural formula. So this is what we have. Let's just let me just check and see if I'm not making any mistake. Okay, let me take a look. I'm supposed to have an oxygen here and not hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, another mistake. Hydrogen. I've removed that hydrogen. It's all going well now. I think I have everything covered now. So that is 4.14. I hope you didn't make those mistakes that I was making there. The IUPAC name of the organic pro uh, product for this reaction. Uh, the organic product is the ester and not the HQO. So what is the name of this ester? We're going to have methyl propanoid right this part of the name comes from the alcohol and this part of the name comes from the acid methyl propanoid right i think we have that covered let's take a look at 4.2 compound a is a six carbon branch alkane and it is used in a two-step reaction to prepare compound c okay so compound a and then we go to b and lastly we go to c Reaction 2 is an addition reaction. If reaction 2 is an addition reaction, then here we have an alkene because you can only add it to an alkene. Okay, we know that for sure. And then 4.2.1, the name of formula of the inorganic reactant needed in a reaction 2. So we have an alkene and our product is an alkene. So we have an alkene and our product is an alkene. So, I think, you know, it is quite easy to deduce here that we have a hydrogenation. We have a hydrogenation. So, uh, what is the inorganic reaction needed for hydrogenation? Platinum, palladium, nickel, I wonder what else. But those are the ones that I can recall from my head on the spot. Okay, 4.2.2. The IUPAC name of compound B. So compound B is an alkene. Let's try sketching the alkene. We can try uh, sketching the alkene using compound C. We're sort of removing two hydrogens there. So um, the, the question says the IUPAC name, but it's better to sketch before we actually name the compound, right? It becomes easier. So let's see. One, one. Okay, and then carbon, and then carbon, and then here we're gonna have carbon, and then another carbon. But we are removing two hydrogens in reaction one, right? Not two hydrogens, but let's say, yeah, we are removing uh, the compound that is here and another compound, not compound, but element, another element that is there, right? So we have a double bond here as a consequence. In compound B, we have a double bond because. How are we adding these two hydrogens in a reaction 2 if compound B doesn't have a double bond? It will not make sense. So we have a double bond there. So now we can name a compound B using that knowledge. So if we were to name compound B, obviously we would have butan 1 in. Okay? And then so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So on the third carbon, we have 2 point not two because like i said on the third so why do i say on the third and say two right let me just i'm trying to drag this uh to the right so i'm gonna have two point two dash die me file butane one in so let me hide the structure and try drawing it and see if i'm gonna end up with the same thing so butane so one two three four one in double bond 2.2 dimethyl so two is here so carbon carbon is that what we have is that what we're dealing with um that is not quite what we are dealing with uh, because if i reveal that structure uh, let me do that 
I have okay the carbons are on the third so this is 3.3 .3 and not 2.2 .2. right if I didn't do that if I didn't try to verify I was actually going to get it wrong so yeah I'm glad I did try to verify because I had made a mistake but anyway stories that's what we have uh, that is 4.22.2 and then what about 4.2.3 the type of reaction represented by reaction 1. In reaction 1, we have a hollow alkene. Oh, well, in compound A, in reaction 1, we start with a hollow alkene and we end up with an alkene. Clearly, it is an elimination reaction. Yeah, because we start with a saturated compound and we end up with an unsaturated compound. So that is 4.2.3.